Have you taken a walk in the woods and seen the forest floor, tree trunks and rocks covered with a green carpet like thing? Something that looks like this? Well, if we zoom in, we can actually see that these green things are not grass but are plants smaller than grass. These plants are called bryophytes. Bryophytes are small, non-vascular, seedless plants. Bryophytes grow especially well in moist and shady places like forests and can grow on a variety of surfaces like rocks and dead tree logs. Bryophytes are of many types. We're going to focus on two major types of bryophytes, liverworts and mosses. Since bryophytes are non-vascular plants, they don't have proper differentiated vascular tissues. Instead, their bodies are made up of undifferentiated multicellular structures called thallus. The singular is thallus and the plural is thalli. These structures have the reproductive structures of bryophytes as well. Let's first take a closer look at liverworts. Examples of liverworts include Marchantia and Lunularia. Liverworts have a mostly flattened and broad thallus that grows quite close to the surface. You can see in the examples of you can see in the examples of Marchantia and Lunularia that this green color structure, this thallus that you see here is quite broad and flat and it is growing close to the surface. Liverworts reproduce asexually by fragmentation or through these structures called gemma cups. These circular structures that you see here, these are the gemma cups. And if we were to zoom in one on and if we were to zoom in on one of the gemma cups, this is how it would look like. The gemma cups contain asexual multicellular buds called gemmae inside them. When the gemma cup detaches from the thallus, the gemmae inside them develop and form a new plant. Sexual reproduction in liverworts occurs through structures called gametophytes. The female gametophyte is the archegonium and the male gametophyte is the antheridium. Now these female and male gametophytes may be produced on the same thallus or may be produced on different thalli. And you can clearly see here that the female and male gametophytes are morphologically different. The archegonium has a more starfish like appearance while the antheridium has a more flattened disc like appearance. The archegonium produces the haploid egg cell. The antheridium produces the haploid motile sperm cell. The motile sperm cell swims towards the archegonium and fuses with the egg cell inside. The fusion results in the formation of the diploid zygote. The zygote develops into a structure called the sporophyte and it looks something like this. Sporophyte has a foot which attaches it to the anth Sporophyte has a foot which attaches it to the archegonium. It has the capsule in which the cells undergo meiosis to form the haploid spores. The foot and the capsule are attached by a structure called a seta. Initially, the sporophyte develops inside the archegonium. As the sporophyte develops, the seta elongates, which means it increases in length. As the seta elongates, the sporophyte erupts from the archegonium and comes out of it. It is still attached to the archegonium by the foot but it is outside the archegonium. Once outside, the capsule ruptures and the spores are dispersed. The spores then land on surfaces and under suitable conditions, they germinate to produce new gametophytes. Mosses are another type of bryophytes. Examples of mosses include sphagnum and funeria. Unlike liverworts, which are mainly flat, mosses have a thin, upright and more leafy thallus. Asexual reproduction is through fragmentation or budding. The haploid gametophytes of moss form on top of leafy structures. These are the leafy structures and on top of this the gametophytes are formed. When fertilization occurs, the diploid zygote forms the sporophyte inside the female gametophyte which is the archegonium. As the sporophyte develops, it erupts out of the female gametophyte and comes out looking like this. So these structures are the sporophytes. They have a capsule inside which the spores are contained, a seta or the stalk and the foot which attaches the sporophyte to the gametophyte. 
Unlike liverworts, the spores of mosses don't directly develop into gametophytes. Let's take a closer look at how the spores develop. So this is the leafy structure on top of which the gametophyte is present. And this female gametophyte has the sporophyte which has come out, which has developed fully and it has come out. So the capsule bears the haploid spores. When the capsule ruptures, the spores are released. Instead of forming gametophytes directly, they develop into an intermediate stage called the protonema. The protonema is a branched filamentous structure. And on this protonema, a structure called the lateral bud develops. And this gives rise to the second intermediate stage called the leafy stage. Remember how we talked about the gametophytes growing on top of the leafy stage? Yeah, this is that leafy stage. And on this leafy stage, the gametophytes then develop. If you want to learn more about reproduction in mosses and liverworts, go check out our video on bryophytes. Moss has a variety of uses. Sphagnum, when dried, is called peat and is used as fuel in many parts of the world. Moss can hold a lot of water, so it is also used in agriculture to condition the soil. Living material like plants are transported, packaged in moss because of its water holding capacity. Ecologically, bryophytes play a very important role that we cannot directly see. You see, when a natural disaster like a forest fire destroys a habitat, bryophytes are the first species to colonize the land. As they grow, they break down the rocks which leads to soil formation. And with the presence of soil, higher plants are able to grow there. Bryophytes also serve as food for some herbivores. This brings in animals into the habitat as well. What do you think will happen if moss and liverworts suddenly became extinct? How would it affect us? Think about it.